All right, Coach. How are you today, this afternoon? Peachy. Got the Illini, a big win for Coach Hartland. Always good to beat the Spartans. We've got all kinds of good news on Illini news today. So this is good, good, good Saturday afternoon for the uh, Illini Nation. I agree. All right, we'll go ahead and uh, go ahead and get started. I've got four fifteen, and folks can line up in the chat, and then uh, maybe Coach, maybe you can start off a little bit about you know your last practice before the spring game and and prepping uh, prep before uh, heading into Monday, and any updates to Monday's format and schedule. Yeah, absolutely. So. Uh, today was actually practice number 12. Um, you know, when we set the schedule up uh, at the beginning of January, we wanted to go a five-week window, uh, practice on Tuesday, Thursday, Saturdays, and uh, kind of slide the spring game in as it laid out. Um, so that jumped into uh, today's practice number 12, kind of gone as scheduled. I was really, really uh, uh, pleased today. You know, it was kind of a, a day that we practiced a little bit, then we went into uh, Monday night's format, uh, just how we're going to uh, play the game and had officials out there and, and really just thought our guys were efficient. Um, uh, we went a little shadow tempo, uh, which isn't quite full speed, but a, a good brisk uh, run and, and uh, couldn't be happier with the way they kind of executed that. Um, you know, I, I will give you a roster. I'll give you guys a roster, probably not till about mid at, midday uh, Monday, just literally not trying to hide anything. Obviously just, just don't know exactly who's going to be able to uh, play. We had about probably about a half a dozen guys that are, you know, have missed some time here as of late to practice today. We're going to see how they recover and uh, be ready for Monday. And then obviously, uh, um, you, know, you know, give you a, a final roster on Monday afternoon. Um, like I said earlier, the format will be really just a normal football game. We'll have guys in orange, guys in blue. The guys in orange will will be our, our more, uh, um, I would say, the, the guys we feel we started a normal game uh, would be our starters, the guys that uh, we factor into how they practice over the last four weeks and uh, perform, but there will be a lot of guys that rotate in with that group. There'll be some of those guys in the orange group that roll in with a blue group. Um, kicking will be a combination of both orange and blue. It won't be live kicking situations. Uh, we'll practice all four phases, all, court, all four core phases, punt, punt, return, kickoff, kickoff, return. We'll actually incorporate some of our guys that have been limited during spring drills. So you'll see some guys that, that even though they haven't been in practice, is fully engaged, uh, talking with Jeremy and the uh, training room just to get those guys on the field talking football speaking football it's not a live rep so there's no threat of uh, contact or injury uh, so we'll incorporate some of that um, uh, have a have a rapid fire field goals at the end of the first and third quarter which will be uh, the execution of six field goals as quick as we can and then uh, the scoring will be if the orange group scores it'll be normal scoring uh, if the blue group scores that's points worth double uh, except for during the field goal so um, really excited about the group. I think we've uh, put ourselves in a position. Uh, a lot of excited about a lot of things off the field as well, just the way they've developed and handled themselves uh, going into that last week. Recruiting is going very well for us. Today was a great day. Um, so I think a lot of good things happening around the program and hopefully uh, continue to move forward. So well, with that, open it up for questions. All right, Jeremy, you can lead it off and everybody else knows the drill. Hey, Brett, good afternoon. I know um, for us, this is our first real huge evaluation opportunity, but for you guys, you get to see them every day. How big uh, of an evaluation mark is this spring game for you guys? Well, I think, Jeremy, the obvious, right, it's, it's probably as legitimate uh, of opportunities we would get to be in a live you know, game scenario, even though we're going against each other. It's going to be you know, officials. There's going to be, um, I don't know what the final count is, the number of people that are in the stand. So that's exciting. I see the see the pressure of game day that we're building up as best we can as coaches to see how our guys perform under that. Um, really no restrictions as far as how we're going to line up and play and, 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 and execute things offensively, defensively. So, um, you know, the, the pure element of that is going to be a, a, a good thing to, 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 you know, put a quantitative measure on. Um, but we've got a long time between now and the fall too, right? This is practice number 13 on Monday and we'll have two practices after that, but, a lot of prep time in the summer and fall camp to get ready for Nebraska, but it is a good, it is a good evaluation tool. And I know you can't talk specifics, but to have uh, an in-stater buy-in, downstater buy-in, like how reassuring is that, that to, that your pitch seems to be working and, and can that help uh, create a domino effect? You know, I think recruiting is uh, from what we've gotten here to, to where we are today, uh, been just a, a, a very, very positive thing for our staff, you know, done certain things that you guys have written about. A lot of things probably have never been noted. Um, just things we do behind the scenes, phone calls. I literally 
walk down the hallway after getting off the phone with another big state coach and, and um, you know, the evaluation that we've had here in the last couple of weeks to, to get where we are moving forward. So uh, I've said all along, right, for us to, to, to be uh, the flagship of the state and for us to be the University of Illinois and um, build this thing, sustained success, it's going to have to start with the kids from Illinois and, and to get on board with the coaches and to get on board with the players and ultimately to get players in our program that believe in those same things are going to, is going to be, you know, absolutely uh, uh, the, the, the greatest mark of our program. I think we as a program then have to reflect the state. I've said this a number of times, but the only times I've seen great organizations succeed for a long period of time is when they reflect the areas that they're from. So, you know, to be in here in Illinois and represent uh, this state and the, the hardworking mentality of the people that make up the state, our background, our alumni, uh, is 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 going to be very important. Thank you, Brett. Thank you. Hey, Brett. Good afternoon. Uh, I noticed this morning that we got to see the special teamers for about the first time, and Blake Hayes was out there as well as Hugh Robertson. We know all know how Blake Hayes is. What kind of a vibrant personality? Um, do you, what kind of a guy is Hugh Robertson, and, and how does he fit in to your punting game? Well, you know, honestly, when I was getting here and I uh, realized the the, the dynamic duo I had there upon her was pretty cool. Uh, him and Hugh both um, just great personalities. Both of them have very unique stories uh, uh, before they even came here, right? So they've got a unique perspective and background, obviously, as uh, uh, as you well know. I would say that probably the most intriguing thing to watch both those guys interact is their personal relationship with each other. But then literally, like to watch these guys in pre-practice, they will stand 40 yards away from each other and punt the ball to one another and like nobody takes a step more than one way or the other. They just, the accuracy of their punts is like so uncharted. I've never seen anything like it. Even Ben, uh, our special teams coordinator, Ben Miller, just the, the skill set of these two guys is very rare and very, very awesome. Um, I think we have to realize the, the true potential and, and the weapons that we have with those two guys. And I also noticed this morning there was an, uh, a larger number of green shirts that came out on the field when the rest of the team came out. Is that just precautionary, just keeping certain guys out of certain drills and, and limited contact with them? Jim, great question. Actually, um, today was the largest amount of green shirts just for a reason. So there's certain guys um, in a normal uh, uh, practice or, or scrimmage scenario, those guys are being held out for a very variety of reasons, right? There's some guys due to injury, some guys due to, uh, you know, just not being able to participate at this time. So what we did is we incorporated those guys in green jerseys because on Saturday, uh, I'm sorry, on Monday, they'll be in white jerseys. They'll be able to actively participate, but they can't take contact. So they'll be involved in, in uh, um, look teams for special teams units. And the white just means they can't get hit, just like our quarterbacks will be in white uh, on Monday. Uh, so none of them will be hit. So anybody that can't have contact, we're putting them in white jerseys. Thanks, and Brett. Appreciate it. Green. Uh, that's it. That was just it. Thanks, Brett. Yep. Hey, Brett. Um, I want to dial back to Thursday's practice real quick since it was the last one in pads. I know we were only there for 15 minutes as media members, but it kind of, at least to me, seemed like there was a bit of a palpable, maybe extra energy, a little extra own, a little more talking. Did you kind of sense that throughout the practice as well? How did you feel about that last practice in pads? Well, we, we gassed them up. You know, we, we said that it, it, it's a Thursday practice, but according to how the game laid out, this was like, it was like a Tuesday uh, work day for us. And, and, you know, I, as we build this thing and, and develop it the right way, our kids will know that Tuesday and Wednesday are our hardest, most physical work days. Tuesday, uh, probably the most significant, to be quite honest. So we had gassed them up and, uh, you know, tanking his crew to our positional coaches and let those guys know what we expected uh, in that practice and they had good energy. I like the way they, especially the way they started. Um, I think when you guys got in, we'd already done a, a, a run, we, we call them RTDs, run tackle drill. Uh, so some things to kind of get their bodies going a little bit. We did a goal line tackling, I think, before you guys got in the stadium, to be honest. And so there was definitely some juice in that drill. Um, it's not really goal line tackling. It's just short space tackling that you use on early downs and, and a little bit on third down. So uh, it's a good, intense drill. And I think that you saw the byproduct of that more than anything. And Jim just mentioned when we got there today, the specialists were on the field and all the other guys kind of slowly started to trickle out. And they just seemed, again, I'm kind of going off a vibe that I felt just that they seemed very upbeat, very energetic in a different sort of way than on Thursday. I mean, what, what's the excitement you feel about these guys surrounding Monday's game? Is it kind of palpable at this point? These guys are ready to, to do this. 
Yeah, I think they are. You know, uh, you know, I've been trying to, you know, get them that way. Um, you know, when I approached the uh, the powers that be, I, I wanted to, you know, have something unique to Illinois football, the block eye for a reason. And, and, you know, we talked about Thursday night games, Friday night games, you know, when they threw out to me the idea of Monday night game, I absolutely jumped on board and wanted to give them their own time slot. I think somebody told me there was uh, seven SEC games today. I know there's some Big Ten games around. So, um, you know, the fact that Monday night we can be live on the Big Ten Network, uh, I think it's got these guys a little bit uh, jacked up. Um, you know, we'll, we'll uh, try to make it as game-like as we can. In addition to that, simply, and I, I know we went over this when we talked uh, uh, earlier, that I think they're excited to be in front of their family and friends, right? So, I mean, I don't, I, I, I just think there's a certain element to you as a player um, that if you know your parents are going to be there, your family, your friends, you're being watched on national TV, whatever it is, I think gonna gonna bring you a little juice. So um, I, I think we'll see a, a good good uh, good active uh, uh, frenzy on Monday night. And hopefully we'll play within our minds. We'll play play a, a safe and and, and uh, effective ball game and see where we stand. Thanks, Brett. Yep. Hey, Brett. Obviously, you've talked a lot about just the players' excitement surrounding Monday, but where are you kind of at in terms of excitement, nerves? Obviously, you're going to be in front of Illinois fans and Illinois community really for the first time, kind of, you know, in the spotlight for them to see you do your thing. Um, what, are, what are just the feelings for you coming up on Monday? You know, Gabby, it's uh, um, this is kind of um, old hat for me a little bit, you know, uh, but I would also say that I'm, I'm excited, you know, I, uh, Friday afternoons, we usually get out of a staff meeting about 4.35, or and these guys are – my coaches are usually in the building until, you know, from 5 in the morning, 5.30 in the morning until 8 or 9 at night. And on Fridays, I've usually tried to knock out um, by 4.30 or 5. Uh, and I get to – the reason I'm selfish, I get to go grab my girls uh, and grab my daycare, and, and then we go to the park. And uh, I was sitting there uh, on a swing set um, trying to decide whether we were going to go to the swings, the, the, the balance beam, or the uh, jungle gym next. And, and – a gentleman walked up to me and, and basically welcomed me and, and said, excited to see you here. Saw my girls and, and um, said, I, I can't wait to get in there Monday night. It's been a long time. And it kind of just took me back to being in a community, right? And, and being a normal person in this community. And then also the outreach that we will have, right? It's the first time we've had people in Memorial Stadium in a long time. It's the first time uh, the community has been able to see this new addition of what we are at the University of Illinois. So I know there's a lot of excitement, and for that, I'm excited. I'm, I, I, I am. I'm, I just, I'm a detail guy, right? I want to get through tomorrow, uh, to quite honestly, to get to where we need to be Monday, and then Monday will be uh, as effective. I was very, very excited about what I saw today, and if today is a good indication of what I'm going to see Monday night, we went the entire uh, practice today during the game. We were in a, 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 a again, a, a shadow tempo game where we moved the ball. We were backed up. We were short yardage. We were. Uh, extreme long. We worked all four phases of kicking game. We didn't have one drop ball offense. We didn't have one dropped ball. Um, and for the quarterbacks to throw it, for the receivers to catch it, um, uh, I, I thought that was a really significant mark in our program uh, because that hadn't happened to this point. So I'm not saying every ball was completed, right? So somewhere, uh, but if our guys got their hands on it, they caught it, which is a nice step in the right direction. Yeah, and obviously just, you know, coming up on the spring game and, you know, double-digit practices now, where have you really, like, seen the team make a jump or just how have you seen them improve, not so much, like, physically and, like, from a football stance, but just, like, from a togetherness stance and how they've really embodied, you know, what you want to set for this team? Yeah, it um, probably two – we'd be here for an hour. Um, like, I literally – I look at everything from the way they take the field to the way they leave it, um, the way they – do post-practice, you know, just Tank will come in and tell me that we have post-practice recovery at 100%, which means every kid gets in the cold tub. And I know a lot of people don't believe this, but uh, most young men between the age of 18 and 22 don't want to hop in a cold tub for five minutes after practice, even though we tell them it's going to be good for them. So we'll have 100% of those guys get in there, and it just it, – it, it that tells me a huge step in the right direction. The way they dress, um, the hands that we put on them uh, pre-practice, during the practice, um, the way they finish – uh, the way they drill, we did run tackle drills today. We introduced two new ones, a stumble bum and the, uh, 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 si uh, the running knife, which is uh, kind of an open field sideline tackle drill. They're, they're, they're so much better in those things right now than what they were. So I don't know what that means. I just know we've gotten better. And, and that's all I ask our guys to do, keep stacking days. Uh, we're 12 practices into it. Um, if we get better tomorrow on Sunday to get ready for Monday, we've got a chance. Thanks, Brett. Thank you.
Coach, uh, what's the thing on Monday you won't, most want to see from your team? What's the most important thing you want to say? Well, Bob, you know, for me, I, I want them to play safe, right? I, I, want to, I want everybody that starts that game to finish the game. Um, but I'm assuming football-wise, um, you know, I, I, I've been preaching to our guys quite a bit, and you'll hear me say it, you know, before you can win a game, you got to stop losing it. Um, and, you know, so the three easiest ways to lose a game is 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 – through turnovers, mental errors, and, and uh, uh, penalties, right? So if we can be positive in that area, right, if we can, you know, not turn the ball over offensively, if we can create some tur turnovers defensively, which is obviously a, a tough situation when you're playing each other, but if we can, you know, have few to, few to no penalties and, and few to no mental errors, if we make that step and show that we can execute and, and, and uh, put ourselves in position to win a game, then, then we're, we're going in the right direction. And what the flip side, you kind of answered it. What's the biggest fear about you beyond the injuries? Is it a sloppy game? Is it that that's yeah. A, yeah, that's a great, that's a great point, Bob. I would think to anytime you watch or observe something you don't coach, it's concerning. And then you got to figure out if I allowed this to happen or is it uh, just not enforced enough? So, like a lot of times, there's a saying in coaching, right? You, you see on Saturdays what you allow to happen during the week. And, you know, I know what we don't allow. Like I, I bring it up, I point to it. Um, Positive reinforcement goes a long way, but sometimes negative reinforcement is necessary. I tell our coaches all the time, coach the room, not the not the name. Because uh, if I'm just if I'm on a I'm in a room full of all of you like we are right now, and I say, hey Lauren, you gotta sit up here and pay attention, you know, then Lauren Tate's gonna pay attention, but all of you just look around, you don't take effect to it, right? If you say a player's name, they naturally pay attention. If you say a group and coach to the group, hey, we all gotta sit up, learn, pay attention, they all listen. So there's just learning things that we have to make sure as coaches we're getting across to them. Um, and Monday will be a good test to see if we're getting in the right direction. Thanks, Coach. Lauren, I wouldn't mean to point you out. I'm just, I thought you were paying attention the whole time. Did I unmute? I'm going to sneak yeah, in a good. question. Uh, we were so, a lot of talk about tackling, whether you tackle in practice, did we tackle well in games? How are we tackling in spring practice and what do you see in our tackling ability? You know, that's, that's probably one of the uh, areas that I'm more excited to see anything Saturday night or Monday night is that is tackling. You know, so we've had two scrimmages. Um, I would say the first scrimmage um, went, I, I think we had minimal uh, missed tackles, which was really awesome. Now, I don't know if that was defensively, we did things well or offensively, we can't make a miss, but we didn't have many missed tackles in the first scrimmage. The second scrimmage, I would say the offense took a step forward. We had some missed tackles. We had some guys, you know, um, pouring their fundamentals and their breakdown. Um, so I'm really kind of excited. This is really our third, you know, the NCA allows you to have three big time scrimmages and Monday night will be our third one. So it's kind of the culmination of where we're at. So uh, I, I'm, I'm very excited, Lauren, Lauren. I think our coaches have done a nice job defensively, but we work a lot of offensive drills on how to set up and, and make a player miss. A lot of things I think the players hadn't really heard before and, um, you know, running and tackling are a big part of football. And, and uh, to get better at that specific skill set is something we do on a daily basis. Thank you. Thank you. Coach, I'm, I'm curious on the, on the personal side. I guess having been in the NFL for three years, uh, this is kind of the first college game environment for your daughters. Uh, you know, uh, is there a plan? Is is will Jen be up in the suites? Do you want to have them kind of down on the field since it's a spring game? What what's your plan for that? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Thank you. Um, the the plan is Jen will have them up in the suites. Um, when I decided to do the Monday night football theme, I knew it was going to cut into their bedtime. So uh, uh, I think they'll uh, be able to take in the first half. But uh, my younger one, especially after about eight o'clock, she turns into a um, shall we say a little little tired young lady who at times grows a little red cake with a pitchfork and, 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 and starts asking a little feisty. So she, uh, she, those two will be going to bed, at, I think at halftime. And, and, uh, um, then, uh, uh, I think the <laughs> the part, they're not quite there yet. They understand football. When we see football, they always talk about it. That's what daddy does. And, um, my, my oldest asked me the other day, she goes, daddy, you're the head coach. I said, that's right, Bell. And so she, she's starting to grasp it. Um, but, I think they're probably a couple of years away from truly grasping a football game yet. What about the environment? Like, you know, the band will be there, you know. Yeah. 
you think they'll they'll uh, enjoy the the college football environment on on, on Monday night? Yeah, my my uh, my oldest, but the Bella, she actually took in a couple of Patriots games. Um, you know, last year because of COVID, they couldn't take in the Giants games live. But um, Riella took in, and she loved the cheerleaders. She loved the band. She kind of so-so on the mascot, but that's been a full year. So it's been a, a year in the waiting and, and uh, we definitely point things out, but I, I know they're very excited. Uh, they came to a scrimmage a couple of weeks ago and they love the players in their pads and in their uniforms. So they'll definitely be engaged with it. Um, and and uh, I'm sure I'll hear and see quite a few good pictures about it. Great, thanks. Thank you. Hey, Brett, I have a question just about general format and scoring and Kind of what goes into uh, the event on Monday and in general, these intra-squad scrimmages, what determines why scoring and, and how come it's usually different maybe year to year, program to program? Like what are the criteria with that? You know, uh, Paul, I, I, uh, I can't speak for others, only for myself. Um, I, I kind of went. count for double so when they score it, it uh, uh, should put a little pressure on them so that's how I've done it you know I, I'm not uh, I, I don't have time in a day and smart enough to figure out some of these teams that score you know every third down's worth a point and you know certain things that equate and they got all these different numbers I just want to kind of play a good old you know you know good old American football and have touchdowns count for six and if they're by the blue they count for double for 12 but that's really about as simple as I can make it and about as easy as we can make it all happen. So then when it's over, when you look at the score results, do you, like how much stock do you put into what the scoring is? And then how do you take your evaluation of the final result going forward for next fall? The, you know, I'll, I'll take it as it comes on Monday. Um, I haven't really ever got wrapped up uh, in the score, but I would, I would definitely, you know, if we're in a red area, I want to, you know, we always tell our kids we want to, uh, when we're in the red area, there's certain expectations that we have, right? When we're going to try to score as many touchdowns, not field goals. And if we are in a third down situation and we offensively can't convert, we definitely got to kick that field goal. Um, it's a, otherwise, it's a four-point swing. Um, there's a lot of things we've taught our guys about where they are on the field and what points matter. So that's the part I'm really going to stress to them is uh, teaching the football IQ. Obviously, the score is important. We're going to be on national TV, so that's going to be out there as well. But um, – there's probably a, in, in, in this one specific case, not a lot of emphasis on the final number, just more about the production. Thanks, Brett. Thank you. Hey, good afternoon, Brett. Uh, in chatting with Bart yesterday, it sounds like there's a handful, more than five offensive linemen who are you know, having a pretty good spring. What's an ideal number for you guys that you would feel comfortable with putting in a game? And, and is there a way that you would rotate guys in and out during the course of a regular season game? Yeah, Joey, I would say, um, you know, Bart's done, you know, a tremendous job with his group uh, through through 12 practices. Um, we do things a little bit different than they had been accustomed to here. So that group in particular, I think, had a huge transition uh, uh, angle to go through. Um, and they've handled it very, very well. I would also add, you know, there's probably, you know, Palcho, um, a, a significant player for us that um, we, we obviously will factor into the fall, hasn't taken one rep of spring ball. So that's just another guy on top of what Bart's talking about. But I would say the ideal number is, you know, somewhere in that world of, of, of seven to nine players that you'd like to go in the game, knowing you feel pretty good. I mean, obviously more than that would be great, but if you have two tackles and one of the, and a, and a, and a bonus swing guy or one of your Stu Tart and one of your two starting tackles can play both right and left comfortably. Um, if you had three tackles going into a game, you'd feel pretty good. And then, I think in the interior core between center guard guard, if you have five guys in that mix uh, that, you know, feel very good or, you know, that a guard can play center. If it's a, if your number one right guard is your number two uh, center or vice versa, if your number one uh, uh, or your number two center is your, your backup left guard. So there's some flexibility in the numbers. Uh, but I would think going into the game, if you could, you know, kind of say that you're at that eight to, you know, seven to nine, eight for sure. Uh, of offensive linemen you want to get in the game would be a positive thing. And then in terms of like logistics, what are you looking for in your coaching staff in terms of communication on Monday night? And can you share who would be up in the box if anybody for a spring game? Yeah, Joey, that's actually went through a transition. Originally, we had kind of talked about putting coaches up and down, um, but just kind of where we're at as a staff and as well as we've been practicing, 
I don't want to, uh, um, I don't want to lose the effect of, of, uh, of having a really good production of, of learning on, on Monday night. I, I don't think we're quite there yet as a program. So uh, I'd hope to get one where there are going to be coaches up in the box and coaches on the field, but we'll do that twice in the fall. I want to make sure we have two of those before we hit the ground running uh, against Nebraska. So all my coaches will be on the sidelines. We'll be on headsets. Um, it'll be like a, a normal game day operation in that manner. But uh, from what we know, from what I know right now, Ryan and, and uh, TP, Tony Peterson, um, our two play callers and Ben Miller, our, our special teams coordinator, all those guys will be on the field um, on a game and on the fall, in the fall on, on game day. So uh, as long as those three are, are where they're comfortable at, and then we'll kind of adjust off of, uh, I'm still learning my, my players' personalities with our coaches, you know, um, uh, you know, there's a, a part of me as a coach that you want your best eyes in the sky, right? But if they're also your best, best uh, uh, motivators or your best adjusters on the field on game day, that's got to be there. And, you know, I, I um, you know, feel really good about all of my coaches as these 10 coaches, I know them more and more. So uh, we're not quite at the level I needed to, to kind of say, hey, you're upstairs, you're downstairs. So we're all going to be downstairs for uh, Monday night. Thanks, Brett. Appreciate it. Yep. That's all good. Thanks, Coach. I appreciate you guys. Have a great weekend. Thanks, Brett. Thanks, you too. Thank, Thank you, everybody.